What's going on friends, Enoch here, and uh, I kind of wanted to share a little bit of uh, my thoughts about the current pontificate in the last 10 years, Pope Francis. I know what you're thinking, what does this Catholic rapper really have to offer us? But uh, um, I want to start off by saying first and foremost that I've never publicly, with any of my social medias, um, said anything bad about Pope Francis. I've never attacked Pope Francis, treated him uncharitably, and even amongst my friends. I, I've, I've, you know, in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, I, I've never really uh, said anything about Pope Francis that would be considered uncharitable or really because I have the utmost respect for him as uh, the Holy Father, as a person, and of course in his office because he's the shepherd of the church. So I reserve a lot of my thoughts. Um, and But I there are, I do have some concerns uh, about, about, about the Holy Father. And m my main concerns are going to be uh, the stuff that he says. Um, you know, his, his, his lack of clarity and his ability to just um, say things off the cuffs and have everybody scrambling around trying to make sense of it. And I think that is dangerous to the church. And, and I'll explain why. Um, and I'm going to give an analogy of what I mean. So let's say, for example, you have a father who's got three boys. And um, so the first son... Um, loves his father. Uh, he, everything his father says is gospel. Uh, hates anybody who attacks his father, whether it's justified or not. And that's, I'd say, about 70 to 75% of Catholics who have a very, very elementary understanding of the magisterium and um, or, or don't have a proper understanding of the magisterium and how the, uh, you know, the papal office works. So they'll take something that Pope Francis says in the airplane and they'll apply it to their lives and say, well, this is definitive and anybody who attacks this or even tries to reinterpret it um, is, is the enemy. So you've got that first boy. Second son is really somebody who acknowledges his father exists and he is his father, but has nothing to do with him. He doesn't want anything to do with him. He's a deadbeat dad. I'm, I'm sick and tired. I'm done with him. My, our relationship is just uh, tainted and and that's probably the majority of, of, of the trads who will acknowledge yes he is my father but I'm going to ignore him because I don't like what he says and then you got your third son who's someone who doesn't always agree uh, with what the father his father's doing um, could sometimes go to the drawing board to try to make sense of it to try to help out to kind of interpret what his father said he does the thing is that as a deadbeat dad and continues to give him a chance after chance every single time these situations arise and this this in, in this analogy um the third person is very very small number of catholics i mean as far as apologetics go you know you can you have someone you have some folks at catholic answers um you've eric ibarra mad respect for uh, william albridge mad respect for and I think that, uh, a lot of you know would know this, this reason in theology, you have Mike, Michael Lofton, who I have, I have the utmost respect for. I consider Michael a, a brother in Christ. And I appreciate what Michael does. I really do, um, because I think it's the healthy approach. But I could, I could, <laughs> I feel bad for Michael. Because um, it's, it's this constant work just to try to make sense of what Pope Francis says. Now, that's not my issue. My issue is not, the first, the first son. My issue is not. My issue is not on the sons. My issue is with the father, because a father should see the spiritual necessity of his children and be clear and assertive. And to kind of say things off the cuffs, you've already let the toothpaste out of the tube. And as much respect as I got for you know folks at Catholic Answers or Michael Lofton. Um, at some point, you, you know, you've got to stop and you've got to say, and I think to their credit, they do. At some time, at some point, you got to stop and you got to say, Dad, can you be a little bit more clear? Like, we're continuing to have to defend what you're saying. It's like, this is exhausting. We're playing damage control every time you speak. And you've got the second son who wants nothing to do with his dad. <laughs> the person that they end up having animosity towards Anybody who defends him, now they have animosity towards that person. And we see that. But really, the problem, I think, is, is with the father. We wouldn't have to go through this 
if the father just spoke clearly, and in, in this case, if Pope Francis didn't tiptoe around Catholic doctrine or church teaching, and then and then expect the laity to scramble around or the uh, ap ap apologists or theologians to try to make sense of what he's saying. And that's damaging to the church, in my personal opinion. And the reason I think it's damaging to the church is because once you let the toothpaste out of the tube, you can try to put it in and you might get a very, very, very small percentage back in. This, and in my opinion, this is the case with, like, as great as Michael Lofton is and the reason of theology and Catholic Answers, you've got a small number of Catholics that are tuning in that are getting the better understanding of what Pope Francis says. Well, you might get 20,000 views on your video trying to explain what Pope Francis really meant and in the light of tradition, but you got 500 million people who just took what he said at face value. And you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. But the damage is already done. And, I, and again, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to be one of those people who say that, that Pope Francis is being malicious. I... It could be the fact this is what he actually believes, and this is what he thinks is beneficial to the church. I'm not going to say this is malice. I don't. I don't, I don't know his heart. I'm, I can't discern that. You know. I'm, you know. I'm, I'm, this is. I think the, one of the major problems is is when we don't like somebody, everything that they do is malicious, and everybody who defends them is also malicious. But it's not always the case. So that's my biggest issue with the current pontificate. What benefit? Who, who are you benefiting when you say things that seem contrary to tradition or seem like you're equating Lutherans with Catholics? I know we can. I know this can be explained with the whole, you know, the, the, the death penalty and Adalto C and there's this whole understanding of receiving communion, um, you know, just to your conscience and you can be a mortal sin and all that. This stuff could probably be explained, and there's some people out there who do a good job of explaining it. But how long are we going to be running around trying to explain everything he says that is, you know, not crossing the line of heresy, but getting closer to it? At what point did we stop and say, this is so damaging because hundreds of millions of people already heard the message at face value and here I am playing damage control, I might get 15 to 20,000 out of that 500 million to have a better understanding of what he just said. Why is it there a collective effort from all three sons to go to the father and say, you got to be more clear. You got to stick to this because you're damaging souls. Whether you're doing it malicious or not, whether you think it's, it's be more clear. That's my biggest issue with the last 10 years. You know, people call them Pope Splainers. And I, I don't think Michael Loft is a Pope Splainer. I don't think Eric is a Pope. And then I don't think some of the, the folks over at Catholic Answers are Pope Splainers. I don't even think they're doing it for the sake of Pope Francis. You know, there's nothing about Pope Francis. We, we got to defend him. He's the Pope. <laughs> I think they're doing it for two reasons. Number one, they're doing it because they want, you know, they're doing it for the sake of the family. You know, if a second son who thinks his dad is a deadbeat dad goes to the third son and says, why do you keep defending this guy? He's a deadbeat dad. And his answer is, I'm not doing this for him. I'm doing this for the sake of the family. So that they can have a better understanding of what he's saying so they're not lost. And kudos to them for doing that. At the same time, the second reason is we got to have a better understanding of the magisterium and being listened to the light that the stuff that Pope Francis is saying can be explained in a certain way so that people don't get up and go to the Orthodox or become set of the contest. That's an issue in our church, especially today, especially the last 10 years. Pope Francis made it a lot easier for people to be set of the contest, going to the Orthodox, you know, whether it may be his political views or maybe his, his, you know, some stuff that he agrees with the WEF or just things that he says that are contrary to the church teaching, or it may appear to be, that's an issue. The fault here, I think, is on the father, who's not clear enough to his sons, to the family, rather than the sons attacking each other because of the relationship with the father. 
that's my analogy of things for the last 10 years. But other than that, um, I just, I God bless you guys. And uh, <coughs> regarding regarding music, um, one of you guys know um, the second album is coming out. About 95% done with it. I, I think I think you guys are gonna love this album. Um, and you know, continue to support the music. And uh, um, this is gonna be my last album. I'm gonna finish the second album, and then I'll be going back to making more of the skits because I'm um, by popular by popular demand. Um, other than that, um, God bless you guys. Oh no, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And Lord, you know I'ma let you down. Well, that's your mercy and love up your heart could speak. And for you, I'ma hold my ground. And I'll be like, ooh. You'll be there on the cross, so banging in the nails, yeah. Cross, so banging in the nails, yeah. Got friends in higher places.